is there a supernatural dimension? A world beyond the one we know? Is there life after death? Do angels exist? Can our dreams contain messages from heaven? Can we tap into ancient secrets of the supernatural? Are healing miracles real? Sid Roth has spent over 35 years researching the strange world of the supernatural. Join Sid for this edition of It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth here. Welcome. Welcome to my world where it's naturally supernatural. My guest, Stephen Brooks, operates in all nine gifts of the Spirit. And he says every true believer in the Messiah can operate in these gifts. There's no rejects. Every one of you can operate in these gifts. And he tells me that when he prays to activate the gifts that are within you, they're going to be activated. Do you want that? (laughs) Recently, I had just the wonderful privilege of talking to an Orthodox Jewish woman uh, that came to know the Messiah uh, through a book that I had written. And the only thing she knew, she didn't know the Bible, she didn't know anything except the book that I had written and our television show. And so I was trying to explain to her uh, that that some churches believe in miracles, some don't believe in miracles. And you should have heard her reaction. Utter shock. They don't believe in miracles? What's wrong with them? Stephen, you didn't believe in miracles at one time. So Stephen Brooks, what turned it for you? In fact, you were taught not to believe in miracles. Well, all of my life growing up in church as a young, young child, I was taught that the day of miracles had passed by. But I received a mighty baptism in the Holy Spirit when I was in college. It changed my life, and I found out that the power of God is still available to God's people today. Now, I would like to take some of the gifts of the Spirit and have you explain what they are, maybe give an example. Uh, Let's take my favorite, uh, the gifts of healings. Yes, that's a wonderful gift. And as the old saying goes, the gifts of healings has always been the dinner bell for the lost. In other words, back in the old days, uh, a ranch hand would uh, ring the dinner bell and then all the workers knew that means take a break, time to go to lunch. And so healing is still that dinner bell for the lost. And when those healing gifts are in manifestation, people will come to receive the healing power of God. And if we can have them come receive that healing power, oftentimes the lost also want to receive the healer as well. So they get the whole package, physical healing for the body, which is a restoration uh, back to a healed condition of the body from a diseased or injured or a condition of the body that previously held it back, coming back into its normal healed state. And the gifts of healings are very, very powerful. We must have them operating in the church today. I want them operating in the schools, in your business, when you're shopping, when you're going to the doctors. I, I, I think that this, I, I like what you said, it's God's dinner bell. It gets your attention, especially if you're hungry. And people are hungry. You're hungry. So, uh, uh, Stephen, there was a moment when you were touched with the supernatural gift of healing. Tell me about that. Well, before this gift was given to me, I would always pray for sick people, but I would pray with a prayer of faith. There was no tangible anointing or there was no manifestation of the gifts of the Spirit. But I would still see people healed just by praying in faith. They, they would connect their faith with mine, and then that, that uh, healing would come forth. But the gifts of healings are very powerful. It's when the Holy Spirit works through you with a tremendous anointing, and that gift came upon me Amen. one day when I was in the Dallas, Texas area, 
and this gift came on me. It fell on me. It felt like I'd put a, uh, a garment over my shoulders. I said, Lord, what is this? He said, from this day forward, you will operate in the gifts of healings. And a tremendous healing happened on that very same day as tangible proof that God had given me something that I'd never tell, walked tell in before. First, tell me the first one that happened that same day. Well, while I was in Texas that day, I was staying at my brother's house, and my daughter came running into the house, uh, weeping and crying, screaming, actually. And she said, Daddy, they're all over my legs. I looked at her legs, there was nothing there, but she had just brushed off the fire ants and she was still feeling their presence, but they stung her all over her legs. She had 28 whelps that just broke out on her legs, I counted them, and these, these red, huge whelps began to break out all over her legs. I laid my hands on her legs, I said, in the name of Jesus, leave and every whelp instantly disappeared. All the pain gone, she got up and went back outside and started, started playing. Did it shock you? When that it happened? did shock me, because I <laughs> said, sure. Lord, I've never had this happen before ever. And, and before that, I would minister in the gift of prophecy, and I, I, I would minister in other gifts, but I never had the healing gift, so this was brand new. So I thought, I'm gonna try it out. I'm gonna go to the next meeting, I'm gonna start praying for the sick. And the next meeting I went to, I was uh, going down a line, oh, praying for people, was. laying hands on them, and a young woman in the line, she was 16 years old. She had uh, wore a back brace every day of her life. Matter of fact, she was required by the doctors to wear the back brace 22 hours out of every 24. And she had severe scoliosis of the spine. And I prayed for her, I, I, and I knew the Lord had touched her. I knew God got her. She went back to her seat, but when she walked back to her seat, she looked totally normal. And uh, I left the next day to go to another meeting. But the pastor called me two days later. He said, he said, Stephen, when she woke up the next morning, she got out of bed and her back was completely healed. And on that same day, she had an appointment with the doctor. She went to the doctor, to the doctor's great shock. He verified the healing. He said, what happened to your back? She said, the Lord Jesus has healed my back. And it was a dramatic healing. It was a miracle of healing. You know, Stephen, he went with his wife, Kelly, to Israel with us as our guest teacher. And a major miracle happened to one of our tourists. Uh, she had, for what was it, 20 years, multiple sclerosis? She had severe pain with multiple sclerosis. And you said it's always a joy to see people get healed because oftentimes they're in tormenting pain. And to see the relief of that pain leave and to see the joy on a person's face is priceless. And I remember we were there and I administered that night. There were some people that came forward for prayer. I laid hands on her and God instantly healed her. All the pain left her body and it was an instantaneous miracle that happened right on the spot. Now that's been four but years. I was just going to today. ask that, uh, you know, how long has it been? And he just answered that four years after 20 years of that type of pain. I'm going to tell you something that is normal according to the Bible that I read and it's time that we started being normal. When we come back, I'm going to ask Stephen to totally demystify the gifts of the Spirit. We'll be right back to It's Supernatural! If you love watching our It's Supernatural! TV program, you can now watch hundreds of archive programs online 24 hours a day, seven days a week on your computer, your smartphone, your iPad, or your favorite tablet. ISN will be the vehicle to equip you to being normal. Normal as defined by the Bible. Just log on to SidRoth.org forward slash ISN. We now return to It's Supernatural! What I love is when these gifts happen, when you're having a cup of coffee. You were in Israel having a cup of coffee with your wife. What happened? Well, I went down to, uh, to get a cup of coffee. I sat at the table. This was at the Jerusalem bus stop in a very busy area. I wasn't doing anything spiritual. Matter of fact, said I didn't really want to have to pray for anybody or have to do any type of ministry. I just wanted, uh, wanted to drink my latte. <laughs> so my wife went in line to get me a cup of coffee and she got herself one and two elderly Jewish ladies were there in line 
And my wife overheard them talking about how much pain they were in. One basically was saying, my back is killing me. The other one was saying, yes, I'm in tormenting pain as well. And my wife said, well, my husband, he's sitting right over there. Why don't you go over and ask him to pray for you? He'll pray for you. So they came over to my table. They kind of interrupted my coffee time. But I said, okay, I'll pray for you, but I have to use the name of Jesus. And they said, shh, don't say that name here. You'll start a riot. And they said, we don't want anything to do with that name. I said, okay, that, that's fair, but I have to use his name because that's where the authority comes from. They said, okay, just be real quiet. I said, all right. So I reached out to pray for the first lady. I felt an anointing, but nothing dramatic happened. I just touched her and I said, receive God's healing power. And then I reached over to touch the second lady. When I did that, the Spirit of God came on me with tremendous power. My hand from my elbow down to my fingers caught on fire. Now, wait, wait. A, I, when I hear you say that, caught on fire, it was a it spiritual. Describe. It no, was a I spiritual know it was flame. spiritual, but describe what it felt like. I felt flames leaping off my hand. Both ladies jumped back. One of them said, Dear oh, God, what is that? <laughs> I said, It's the healing power of God. And yeah, I said, can you picture some of you young people walking up to your stu to your teacher and putting your hand on them and the flames of God go right into your teacher? Forget class that day. <laughs> okay. I had to calm them down. I said, I said, here it comes. In, in other words, don't be afraid of it. Here it comes. And I touched her also. And they, uh, she began to be Receive like uh, uh, on fire herself. She said, I'm burning up. And, and, and I said, it's God's healing power. The other lady said, I'm on fire too. I, she said, I thought they spiked my coffee and put some liquor in my coffee. I said, no, that's God's healing power. And then they looked at their watch and they said, we've got to catch our bus. And they staggered out of the bus stop. They looked like two drunk ladies. They were overcome with the Spirit's power. I don't know what happened to them, but I know God got their number. And again, this is God's dinner bell. They knew that Stephen prayed in the name of Jesus. They knew that something supernatural happened to them. And I believe as they went home, they realized the pain was totally gone. Now, you said that you want to demystify the gifts. Uh, and you said that knowledge is so important. Explain. Well, the Apostle Paul said, I do not want you to be ignorant of the spiritual gifts. And so what that word ignorant means is means uninformed or misinformed. And so I found out that the better we understand the gifts, we unlock them in a sense that now we know exactly what they are and they come forth and begin to manifest so much easier when we have a proper understanding of what they are and how they operate. The, the rest after that is a very easy process. After that, really all you have to do is just step out in faith because they will come forth. Now, speaking about stepping out in faith, Tell me about the gift of faith. This is a gift. The gift of faith is very powerful. Instead, we have to understand that all nine gifts mentioned in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 are supernatural. We cannot pull them down and try to explain these as like just basic gifts. They're all on a supernatural level. And when we keep them in the place that God assigned them to, then we see the power that comes with them come forth and build up the body of Christ and reach out and touch the lost. So the gift of faith is not ordinary faith. In other words, this is not like I believe Jonah was swallowed by a large fish and then uh, later, three days later, he went and ministered to Nineveh. This is a supernatural faith that comes upon you and it won't stay forever. It can come and it might rest for three minutes. It might rest for three days or three okay, hours. Tell it's me powerful. about the, the person uh, that had uh, a problem with their feet. Well, I, I had this gift of faith come up on me one time when I was ministering to the sick. And I said, somebody needs a miracle. And there was a young man, he was 17 years old and his feet were as flat as a pancake. He had no arches in his feet. And so his mother said, would you pray for his arches? I said, I will. And I, I had such faith come upon me. I said, take off your shoes, take off your socks, and anybody who's never seen a miracle, come watch. And when I pray for him, do not close your eyes, keep your eyes open, and you will see arches formed in his feet. But wait a second. What if it didn't happen? You realize the faith level of the whole group would go, Pfft. <laughs> right. If it, if it wasn't going to happen, I'm in big trouble. But, For sure. but, but, but when that gift comes, it obliterates you knew. doubt. You knew. There's no doubt. There's no fear. You know God is going to do it. Okay. So people are watching you grab his feet flat as a pancake. What happens? I took his, I, I, uh, I took the, uh, it was the right foot, if I'm correct. I took it in my hand 
And before I can even pray in the name of Jesus, an arch formed right in front of everybody. I couldn't even get out the full prayer and the arch went in a perfectly formed arch in his foot. I grabbed the other one. I started to pray in the name of, and there went the arch. It formed completely in his uh, feet. He stood up and I received the written testimony of his mother of, of this tremendous miracle that happened in his feet. And now his feet are normal. That's not just a healing, that's a miracle. And the reason it happened was because special faith came upon me. If people want to move into the gifts of healings and into the working of miracles, they have to go through the door of special faith. And the power gifts, the greatest one is the gift of special faith. Sometimes I call it super faith because when it comes on you, you feel like Superman. And it's the power of God to do what you're called to do and step out and do it boldly. Okay, you also operate, and it actually operates in all the gifts of the Spirit, all nine. However, tell me about the gift of discernment, discerning a spirit. This is a fascinating gift. Out of all the gifts, Sid, I used to look at them. I felt I was beginning to get a handle on some of the gifts, and I would look at discerning of spirits. And one day I just set my Bible down and I said, Lord, I haven't a clue in the world what this gift is. Would you please help me understand it so it can begin to come forth in my life? And many people call it uh, perhaps a gift of discernment. But discernment is not necessarily a gift. We all should have good discernment. We should all be able to uh, be able to have what also we would call good common sense. But this is something different. This is discerning of spirits. So it can be discerning of evil spirits. It could be discerning of angelic spirits. It could be discerning of the realm of God and His glory. Or it could be discerning the realm of the satanic world. But the discerning of spirits is when our senses are opened up and God can open it up and it can come in different facets. We can see in the spirit. We can hear, taste, touch, or smell in the spirit realm through the gift of discerning of spirits. And, and you know what I think is so neat? Uh, when we come back, I'm going to have Stephen pray for you for uh, just a release of the gifting that God has already put within you, maybe for healing. Uh, but he has the ability to see or smell when something is evil and when something good is going on. I want him to teach on that. We'll be right back. We'll be right back to It's Supernatural. Call now and get Stephen Brooks' revelatory book, How to Operate in the Gifts of the Spirit, and his empowering three-part audio CD teaching series, Experiencing Miracles in Your Everyday Life. Yours for a donation of $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9248. I found out that anybody can operate in the gifts of the Spirit, that it's not just for an elite few special ministers, but any believer can have the Holy Spirit flow through them to operate in the beautiful nine gifts of the Spirit. Stephen's biblically based book and three-part audio CD teaching series is a simple and ultimate guide for every believer to clearly show you how to operate in the supernatural every day. Through these resource tools, you will discover how Jesus ministered supernaturally, clearly understand what the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit are, learn how the nine spiritual gifts can operate through you to bring divine transformation to the people in your life, receive an impartation to do the miracles of Jesus with His power and authority upon you. Included is a special prayer of impartation for you to begin to flow in all nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. What's the purpose of a miracle? It grabs the attention of the non-believer so that they will be open to the gospel. I believe that you will start operating in all of the gifts of the Spirit as you get your knowledge. There's an anointing literally on this. Anyone can operate in the gift of miracles. Don't miss out on getting Stephen Brooks' revelatory book, How to Operate in the Gifts of the Spirit, and his empowering three-part audio CD teaching series, Experiencing Miracles in Your Everyday Life. Yours for a donation of $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9248. Call or you can send your check to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural, P.O. Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28278. Please specify offer number 9248 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today. We now return to It's Supernatural. Now, Stephen, the Bible says that we are supposed to desire spiritual gifts. Yes. Uh, what does that word desire mean? In the Greek, it literally means to be boiling over. Some translations say white hot or on fire. 
So God wants us to have the spiritual gifts. Now, some people have said, well, if the Lord wants me to have them, He'll just give them to me. But in the Greek, it's implied we need to go after them. Yes, God wants us to have them, but we have to pursue them. And when we pursue God and He sees that we really want these mighty gifts of His Spirit, He will release them into our lives and the church will be built up and many people will be blessed. You know, it specifically says we should go after prophecy. Prophecy is a tremendous gift because prophecy, out of all the nine gifts, I believe is the easiest gift to have up and running in your life. It is so easy to prophesy, whether it's the simple gift of prophecy for exhortation, edification, or comfort, or even deeper levels of prophecy which begin to peer deeper into a person's heart. The gift of prophecy is so easy to move into. All you have to do is step out in faith when the Holy Spirit begins to move. Well, I'm, I'm going to have Stephen step out in faith. However, just as we came back from the break, I began to smell an aroma. Well, in Israel, when Stephen was praying for people, I, I could smell roses. It was the most wonderful smell. Okay, if I was to play a little game with Stephen and say a word, except I know what he's going to say. If I was to say the word skunk, <laughs> Tell me what comes to mind. Well, of course, that's not a good fragrance. Now, see, no. when these gifts operate, we can't choose or tell the Holy Spirit how to manifest them. It's as He wills. That's how they'll come forth. And He's doing it now for our profit. Paul said that these gifts are for our profit. Now, not our failure or our, or our demise. So they'll put us over into victory. And so one time I was in a conference and I was a guest speaker but there were also many other speakers. Now, I've done tons of conferences, Sid, so nobody's ever going to know where this was at. Uh, because when I was ministering, a speaker went up and began to minister that I'd never met. I wasn't familiar with this person. But the moment they began to speak, the fragrance of a skunk went over the entire audience. I smelt the skunk. My wife turned to me and she said, she said, Stephen, I smell a skunk. I said, I know, but I said, I'm not in charge of the conference, but unfortunately something's probably going to happen here that's going to leave a stinky smell. And some things did happen that almost I'll threw I'll tell you what, we're running out of time right now. I, there's an urgency for you to pray right now for a release of the gifting that God's already put inside of people. And if God moves you into words of knowledge, please feel free. If you want to receive the mighty gifts of the Holy Spirit right where you're at right now, lift up your hands. A new measure of the anointing of God's Spirit is coming on you now. Receive the gifts. The gift of prophecy is rising up within you right now. Somebody feels a burning in their hands. That is the gift of healings has now been granted unto you. Somebody watching me just felt a mantle come right over your shoulders. Those are for the power gifts. Step out in special faith. Step out in gifts of healings and working of miracles. It's yours. There are people watching right now all over the world who are smelling roses. God is giving you the gift of discerning of, of spirits. Somebody smelling flowers and beautiful floral scents. Lift up your hands and praise the Lord for these gifts are being bestowed upon you right now. And when the Lord gives a gift, He never takes it back. It's yours for the rest of your life. You have to tell me very briefly, you have seen Jesus' face. What does He look like? What did you sense when you saw His face? I've seen some beautiful paintings of the Lord that are close, but I've never seen a painting that's got Him just as who He actually really is. But He is the kindest person I've ever met. He is so kind. He is so humble. He has all of this power and all of this authority. He is the head of the complete church in heaven and in earth, but He is so kind you and know, humble. Did you hear that? He's how would you like your best friend to be the creator of the universe? And his major virtue is he's kind and he's humble and he's pure love. His name in Hebrew is Yeshua, in English, Jesus. If you will with your mouth say, Jesus, do this right with me right now, say out loud, Jesus, please forgive me for all of my sins. I believe your blood washes them away. And now that I am clean, Jesus, come inside of me. I make you Lord of my life. Amen.
Jesus ministered supernaturally using the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And he said, I tell you the truth, anyone who believes in me will do the same miracles I have done and even greater miracles because I am going to be with the Father. Stephen Brooks wants to help you begin flowing in all nine spiritual gifts and experience miracles in your life every day. Call now and get Stephen Brooks' revelatory book, How to Operate in the Gifts of the Spirit, and his empowering three-part audio CD teaching series, Experiencing Miracles in Your Everyday Life. Yours for a donation of $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9248. I found out that anybody can operate in the gifts of the Spirit, that it's not just for an elite few special ministers, but any believer can have the Holy Spirit flow through them to operate in the beautiful nine gifts of the Spirit. This is so simple that I believe people that have been trying to operate in the gifts of the Spirit for decades are going to finally get it. Stephen's biblically based book and three-part audio CD teaching series is a simple and ultimate guide for every believer to clearly show you how to operate in the supernatural every day. Through these resource tools, you will discover how Jesus ministered supernaturally, clearly understand what the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit are, learn how the nine spiritual gifts can operate through you to bring divine transformation to the people in your life, receive an impartation to do the miracles of Jesus with His power and authority upon you. By God's grace, I've seen blinded eyes open. I've seen lame people walk. I've seen people fully paralyzed, be healed and get up and move around. I've seen the deaf uh, have their hearing restored. I've seen mute people speak. And I took the knowledge that God has given me over these last years of traveling around the world and I put it all into these teachings so that you could receive this and walk in it as well. Included is a special prayer of impartation for you to begin to flow in all nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. What's the purpose of a miracle? It grabs the attention of the non-believer so that they will be open to the gospel. I believe that you will start operating in all of the gifts of the Spirit as you get your knowledge. There's an anointing literally on this. Anyone can operate in the gift of miracles, even daily. Don't miss out on getting Stephen Brooks' revelatory book, How to Operate in the Gifts of the Spirit, and his empowering three-part audio CD teaching series, Experiencing Miracles in Your Everyday Life. Yours for a donation of $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9248. Call or you can send your check to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural, P.O. Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28278. Please specify offer number 9248 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today. Next week on It's Supernatural, my guest, that she's been a guest several times on It's Supernatural, it tells me she is moving in some outrageous miracle. And now, hold on to your seats. Put the seatbelt on. She tells me now it's eight breasts have grown back on women. You heard me. Eight breasts have grown back on women.